Welcome back, everyone. We're happy to see you again. And here is the latest ASEAN news. Jakarta citizens wait for the court's decision on the air pollution process against the government. Born and raised in the bustling mega city of Jakarta, Indonesia's densely populated traffic choked capital, Kalisha Khalid has long anguished over the city's toxic air. When her young daughter was plagued by ill health from birth issues, she believes are exacerbated by the city's worsening air pollution, Kalisha decides to take legal action. The mother is one of 32 plaintiffs included in a city lawsuit filed against the President, the Ministry of Health, Environment and Home Affairs, and several regional leaders to compel them to do something about the unhealthy air. The Central Jakarta District Court is expected to rule on the lawsuit first lodged in 2019. The world's fourth most populous country has grappled with choking air pollution in cities, with traffic-locked capital Jakarta consistently ranked among the region's most polluted. Environmental activist Dui Saung says rapid urbanization and chronic traffic are contributing factors to poor air quality in the Indonesia capital. Muslims in Indonesia and Bangladesh demonstrate in support of Palestinian independence after ceasefire. Thousands of Muslims staged protests in the capital cities of Indonesia and Bangladesh in solidarity with Palestinians in Gaza after the ceasefire took hold following 11 days of fighting. Hundreds of Indonesians rallied in front of the United States Embassy in Jakarta, but they will continue to fight and support the Palestinian people's efforts for independence. Meanwhile, in Dhaka, thousands took to the streets after Friday prayers and chanted slogans in support of Palestinians. The ceasefire between Israel and Hamas took hold last week after the worst violence in years, with 243 dead on the Palestinian side and Israel saying 12 civilians and soldiers have been killed. Israel's bombardment of Gaza and militant rocket attacks on Israel towns ceased after 11 days under an agreement mediated by Egypt, but with negotiations to maintain stability still to be held, it was unclear how long it would last. Cambodian completes blocking of blanket in capital Phnom Penh. Cambodia ends a blanket lockdown in the capital Phnom Penh, replacing with targeted lockdown in areas where coronavirus infections have surged. The Southeast Asian nation has recorded one of the world's smallest COVID-19 caseloads, but infections have climbed from about 500 to 16,971 now, with a total 110 deaths. People in yellow zone areas can travel freely, although an overnight curfew will remain in place. Bars, restaurants, sports stadiums, massage parlors and schools will remain closed, and group sizes are restricted to a maximum of 10 people. Malaysia imposes new strict measures to curb virus propagation. According to Dr. Noor Hisham Abdullah, Director General of Health says Malaysia's government imposes such stricter new measures as to prevent mass gathering celebration at the end of Ramadan as the country is in a critical condition now, with the public and private hospital running out of ICU beds. Instead of acting decisively, over the past week the government has repeatedly changed its mind on which regions should be placed under movement control order or partial lockdowns on what activities are allowed and what need to do and what need to shut down, sometimes reversing itself within hours. Most economic sectors will be allowed to operate, but educational institutions will be closed and interstate and interdistrict travels are restricted. 
Earlier in the pandemic, there were a huge cluster of COVID-19 in the crowded living quarters of foreign migrant workers. Now, close to 95% of the new cases are Malaysian infected via random community spread. Health workers start door-to-door -door vaccination for the elderly and bedridden in Manila. Health workers at the suburb in Manila held door-to-door -door vaccinations for bedridden individuals in hopes of augmenting its vaccination program and to protect more vulnerable people from the disease. In Marikina City, residents who cannot make the trip to vaccination centers due to their pre-existing conditions were told to register online. A team of medical frontliners will later be dispatched to visit the individual and after a series of medical checks, they will administer the Sinovac vaccines. Marion Magno, a doctor from Marikina City's health office says, having bedridden and elderly individuals vaccinated early will help reduce their risks, especially in households where people go in and out of their homes. The team hopes to vaccinate over 520 bedridden individuals in Marikina City, although registration rates have currently been low. A recent Pulse Asia survey found out that 6 out of 10 Filipinos were unwilling to be vaccinated due to safety concerns. Commercial districts of Taiwan deserted with the growth of coronavirus cases. Taipei's famous Nyonlit shopping district of Ximinding uses to be bustling with crowds but are now largely deserted due to a surge in coronavirus cases over the last two weeks. Taiwan was seen as an example of how to stop the virus in its tracks, but some 1,800 community cases have been reported in the past two weeks, and the government raised the alert level, restricting social gatherings and closing entertainment venues. Taiwan's health minister says he speak to his United States counterpart to ask for help in obtaining COVID-19 vaccines amid a spike in infections on the island, and the United States Health Secretary will take the matter to the President Joe Biden. The island has reported 2,825 cases since the pandemic began, including 15 new deaths. Singapore approves the COVID-19 vaccine for use in children aged 12 to 15 years. Official says Singapore authorizes to use Pfizer-BioNTech COVID-19 vaccine for those aged 12 to 15 years old in a bid to extend protection to more groups as the country tackles a recent increase of infections. Another piece of the health ministry says data showed the vaccine for younger people demonstrated high efficacy consistent with that observed in the adult population, adding its safety profile was also consistent with that the adult population. According to the official data, that close to 2 million of Singapore's 5.7 million people have received at least one dose. Meanwhile, authorities say about 1.4 million recipients have completed the full two-dose regimen. The city-state has been using the Pfizer, BioNTech and Moderna vaccines and has taken delivery of 200,000 doses of Chinese Sinovac vaccine, which has yet to be granted emergency use authorization. French Corps rejects claims for Agent Orange damage in Vietnam War. A French court throws out a lawsuit brought by a French Vietnamese woman against more than a dozen multinationals that produced and sold toxic herbicide Agent Orange used by the United States troops during the war in Vietnam. The landmark case filed in 2014 has pitched Tran Tonga, a 79-year-old who claims she was a victim of Agent Orange against 14 firms including United States, multinational companies Dow Chemical and Monsanto, now owned by German giant Bayer. Tran confirms to Reuters earlier and the media reports that the case had been thrown out. She adds she will appeal against the ruling and give a news conference to journalists. In addition, Tran, who worked as a journalist and activist in Vietnam in her 20s, she notably was suffering from Agent Orange effects 
including type 2 diabetes and a rare insulin allergy. Meanwhile, United States forces use Agent Orange to defoliate Vietnamese jungles and to destroy Viet Cong crops during the war. The legal proceedings could have been the first to provide compensation to a Vietnamese victim. So far, only military veterans from the United States and other countries involved in the war have won compensation. Thailand reports another record of COVID-19 after the prison cluster. Thailand reports a daily record of 9,635 new coronavirus cases, nearly three-quarters of which are prisoners infected in jail clusters, as the Southeast Asian country struggles with the third wave of infections. The combined cases bring its total infections to 111,082. Thailand also announces 25 new deaths, bringing its overall coronavirus fatalities to 614. The COVID-19 task force says 10,748 inmates had been infected with the coronavirus this month, according to tests on 24,357 prisoners in eight jails. Director General of the Department of the Corrections, Ariut Sintofam, says authorities have been carrying out testing in seven other prisons and more positive cases are expected. Thailand has an inmate population of 310,000 in its 143 jails. The prison spikes follows positive tests for several hospitalized leaders of anti-government protest who are held in pre-trial detention accused of insulting the monarchy, prompting some calls for greater transparency. Thailand's current wave of infections since the start of April. Earthquake kills three people and injures 17 others in Yunnan province, southwest China. Local authorities say at least three people dead and 27 others injured after a series of earthquakes jolted Yangbiyi Autonomous County in Dalibai Autonomous Prefecture, southwest China's Yunnan province. The quakes are filled in all 12 counties and cities of the prefecture, with Yangbi being the worst hit. Two deaths are reported in Yambi County and one in Yongping County. Three people have severely injured and 24 others had minor injuries. About 72,317 residents in 20,192 households are affected by the quakes. According to the China Earthquake Network Centers, four earthquakes over 5-point magnitude jolted Yangbi. Rescue forces have been dispatched to the quake zone and rescue efforts are underway. According to the Ministry of Emergency Management, a work team has also been dispatched to Yunnan. And that's all for today. Thank you for watching. Stay safe, stay healthy, and bye.